Good day, folks, and welcome to another edition of Lumberjack Logic Live. This may be the best episode I ever get to do because so much is dropping today. It just keeps coming in. So edition of Lumberjack right Logic. Now. But I am telling you, this is absolutely fantastic news that we have. I mean, the left is absolutely apoplectic about the left. This is so epic. I can't. I'm I'm excited. Anyway, so we're gonna have I'm gonna share, I'm gonna show you a Letitia James ally talking exposing her and just how bad the ruling is out in new york city i am going to show you i don't know if you guys who know sank unger is or you or whatever his name is i sank i just know him as sank young turks they are going absolutely bananas over something in new york right now that's unrelated to trump but i'm i everywhere i go and i talk to people right now they have one goal and that's to stop the agenda of the radical left the only people who don't want to stop this agenda are woke TikTokers. I'm serious. We are at the point, people, we are going to see potentially one of the biggest landslide elections in the history of all elections. Uh, so with uh, all further ado, I want to mention my sponsor really quick. By the way, people, I'm so thankful to you. Okay, so just hear me on this. I am so thankful. I got another call from my pillow. They cannot believe how great my audience is in supporting Mike Lindell and all his works with election integrity, whether that's through Lindell plan or the sales through mypillow.com. So they've done something again, special for us. We still have the free shipping, but they have added to us a $25 extravaganza sale. Uh, again, not all influencers get this, but because of the vast support that you've given Mike Lindell right now, you know, you can get travel pillows, towels, kitchen towels, all this stuff. $25 using promo code Lumberjack right now, or call them at 800-568-2865. Again, you get to support the show. You get to support Mike. You get to save big money. Uh, and I just want to thank you all so much for that because uh, that's a big, big deal. Just remember, as we, as we approach the election and as we get nearer and nearer to that, this is the goal, people. And actually, the goal is to uh, potentially... Uh, even flip California, although that seems like an outlandish thing right now, especially with all the uh, issues that they have in California, not only with leftism, wokeism, but also with elections and the uh, process. But uh, we, if things are so bad in New York right now, just just wait till you see the video. In fact, I'm going to do something. I'm going to change the order of this show, people. I'm going to share some, and I've got to go grab my uh, earphones anyways. So I'm going to share this right here so i'm gonna take this no i'm gonna start with this okay first i want to share with you something that cnn said the other day don't worry i'm gonna get to the letitia james ally exposing her but do you remember when they told us letitia james told us that mar-a-lago is worth 18 million dollars and cnn backed up all of her claims <laughs> oh my folks watch this Thanks. 30 days to get any of these properties sold. Um, but the property that you alluded to, Mar-Lago, uh, potentially that could be something that could be sold quickly. I think the valuation is something in the hundreds of millions. And I think there could be a buyer for something like that. And that would be literally, if you're talking about doing that between now and Monday, that's picking up the phone, calling someone and then literally writing a check. Yeah. I mean, there could be plenty of international people who want to buy that property. I mean, there's properties that are priced at 150 and 200 million that are nearby that. And Palm Beach is like the NVIDIA, NVIDIA, excuse me, yeah. of real estate. It's just shot up like a rocket. And people do want to live there. Market. They move there. So I think that would be the best case scenario uh, as to. Pro think how sick these people are. Can you imagine being forced to sell your home because of an outrageous ruling by a deranged attorney general in the state of New York? And they're treating this like, oh, well, this is what he needs to do. This is how he solved it. You know, and they told us it was worth 18 million. And that's why Trump was such a fraud. And now they're saying, oh, at least 240 million. Everybody wants to move their property value shooting up like mad. These people are sick. If he's trying to sell quickly, I would encourage that. So, all right. Now that's 240 million estimated. I mean, who knows? You know, he's a desperate seller in this case. Someone picks up the phone and makes that call this week. So I don't know what it'd be. That's still half right. of what it would be. I think you need at least 30 days to get any of these properties sold. Um, but the property that you alluded to, Mar-Lago, 
Uh, potentially, that could be something that could be sold quickly. I think the valuation is something in the hundreds of millions, and I think there could be a buyer for something like that. And that would be literally, if you're talking about doing that between now and Monday, that's picking up the phone, calling someone, and then literally writing a check. Yeah, I mean, there could be plenty of international people who want to buy that property. I mean, there's properties that are priced at 150 and 200 million that are nearby that. And Palm Beach is like the NVIDIA, NVIDIA, excuse me, yeah. of real estate. It's just shot up like a rocket. And people do want to live there. They've moved. People, it shot up like a rocket. It's just, it's the most amazing property. Hundreds of millions of dollars. It's just sick. There. So I think that would be the best case scenario uh, as to proper if he's trying to sell quickly. I would encourage that. So, all right. Now that's $240 million estimated. I mean, who knows? You know, he's a desperate seller in this case. Someone picks up the phone and makes that call this week. So I don't know what it'd be. That's still... That's still half. Now, I, again, don't worry, people. I got another really wild video. You want to see. So what's Letitia going after first? Well, she's going after his golf club in New York. Absolutely gorgeous. Uh, that's in Westchester County. Uh, phenomenal. One of the top courses in the nation by Golf Digest. Okay. I don't think this is going to work for her. Okay. I, I, maybe I can explain some of that later uh, as we get into this. But I want to show you another one. That's this is his property. I think it's called Seven Springs. And Eric Trump was interviewed, and this is in Forbes. And I want you to just, I, as you watch this video, I want you to think about what a property means to you, right? Your family property. Do me a quick favor. I forgot to ask could everybody just take a quick moment, go down there where that thumbs up button is? Hit that thumbs up. We'll get a bunch more people on the street. Chat in with where you're from. Chat rate really helps spread the stream out too. But now watch this one because this is the property Letitia James is going after. This property was originally built in 1919 by Eugene Myers, obviously. Eugene Myers was on the board of the Federal Reserve. Uh, he owned the Washington Post. He was one of the wealthiest people in the world at the time. And really, he wanted to have the most opulent house in the world. It's really what he created here. And how did your family end up with the property? What's the story? Well, the story was that um, after the Myers had the family, they gave it to Yale University in trust. Yale University transferred it over to Rockefeller University, and we actually bought the property off of Rockefeller University. So, you now one of the things my father has been amazing at um, is buying incredible houses, really, you know, one of a kind and unparalleled. Um, and the level of wealth of those people, you know, who built those houses was, was you know, second to none, and they really spared no expense. And he always went after those those properties. You know, they were always very lucky to him. They always attracted him as a builder. He was always mesmerized by them. And how much time did you spend here growing up? Well, we first bought the property in, in 96. I was uh, about 12, 13 years old at the time, and really my brother and I. And you know, my father, during the summers, would always put us to work. And we were literally riding mowers around. We were mowing all the fields. We were cutting down trees. And it was probably the best experience of my life in that. Okay, now listen to that. Listen to the fond memories that Eric Trump has attached to this property. And I want you to think about your childhood, right? And your dad saying, hey, go out there, mow the yard, cut up these trees. They're running chainsaws. They're being young men. This is just beautiful. And then she wants to seize that. What a sick woman. I mean, for a, a crime that doesn't even exist, that all the banks were paid. If you guys didn't catch the story I did the other day on the uh, um, the the. the Trump trial in reverse, if you will, basically where Letitia James uh, is saying that they, you know, where an actual lender got defrauded out of millions of dollars, yet she's taking the other side of that case. It's wild. But here we go. We'll keep going. It was kind of the, the first lessons about development from my father. It really kind of taught me the building blocks of what we do every single day, um, you know, what my job is today. How many rooms is this place? How many square feet? How many pools? Well, there's three pools. Great outdoor pool house, you know, um, but there's 60 rooms in this house. Um, there's 15 bedrooms. Um, there's two servants' quarters, literally wings that go off the house that they originally built. You know, the library that we're in right now, um, as a guy who builds for a living, the casework, the trim, you know, the molding, um, the plaster molding, the ceilings, etc. I mean, just the level of finish. And I could walk around the house for, you know, 
phase and just be enamored almost by the details. I mean, if you look at the indoor pool, there is no nicer marble job in the world. I mean, even the heating vents are recessed under three inches of marble with small little slits cut out of them to allow the heat through. It's just a level of detail that you can never replicate again. Every People, this is what's so interesting about this property is you look at some of these older homes turn of the century where they spent so much time, so much effort into just the finish work of these homes. This place is gorgeous. Every room in this property, uh, every room in this house is exceptional. I mean, he had an unlimited budget. Um, there's probably no question that he exceeded it. You could never build a house like this today. Uh, but when you walk through, I mean, just the details you pick up, it's a very special place. Tell us about these fabulous grounds. Well, one of the things that makes this property so unique, really one of a kind, it's 230 acres in Bedford, New York. There's no piece of land in Westchester, government or otherwise, that's even close to that size. 230 I mean, acres, people. I, I have a bunch of acres of land, you know, but, but not in Westchester, New York, okay? This is phenomenal. We're one of the highest points in Westchester. We are the highest house in Westchester. That's Byram Lake. It's one of the major reservoirs that feed all of Westchester, but also feeds a lot of New York City. Um, it's surrounded by a thousand acres of wildlife preserve, so you're as excluded as you could possibly be. This isn't the only mansion on this 230 acres. Tell us what else is here. We're at the Myers residence right now, and then on the other side of the property is the H.J. Hines, the Hines Ketcha. Him and Myers, they were very good friends. They wanted to live right next to each other, so they built houses really at the same time. Two amazing entrepreneurs, two amazing families that really changed in a big way uh, the legacy of you know, the United States, of corporate America. And when the property was combined and ultimately given to Yale University, you know, it was one property, it went over as one property. And you're building, right, on on part of that 230 or is that outside of the 230? Well, in true Trump fashion, we're, we're always building, we're always renovating. And you know, this house is something that's very special to us. So we put a lot of time and a lot of work into, you know, making it the best. It always was the best. And then we really put the Trump touch on it. And we have approvals to build 14 houses. Whether we actually build those 14 houses is, is another story. But, mm -hmm. you know, they'll each be on roughly 20 acres of land. Um, you know, they'd be the biggest mansions really in Westchester. And we'll see when and you know, how and, and if we ultimately proceed with that plan. Would that mean an end, though, to your private 230-acre compound that you cherished since you were a little boy? Well, it could. It could. <laughs> but, uh, you know, who knows whether we'll do it and when we'll okay. do it. And uh, it's nice to have the ability to do things. But, you know, this is a place that's really special to myself. It's really special to my brother, my mm -hmm. father, really the whole family. I mean, this is really our compound. And I've spent so much of my life here, and I've spent so much time learning the art of, you know, the deal here on this property. And. You know, it's a special place for me and one that I'll always remember and one that I'll always be very close to. And Letitia James wants to take it from the Trump family. Yeah. So these are the ones she filed on uh, the Seven Springs house and grounds. It's 230. It's just gorgeous, right? And then also on the golf course. Now, again, I don't think this is going to happen for a couple reasons. Uh, one is she is trying to take an asset that I don't think is solely in his name and it's probably in i'm gonna guess the way trump would would do this is in a, a family trust uh people with that kind of money would do that so i, I don't think this is going to be the easy process that tish james thinks it's going to be uh it, it's not just a one owner type of thing so i i just don't see this going down the way she thinks people who have this kind of money protect their assets through various means and I'm sure Donald Trump has done that as well. Um, again, please do smash that like. I've got some other great videos that I'm going to pull into this stream for you as well. Uh, let me go back to this, though, really quickly. I talked a little bit about this map. Uh, this could be the map, people. It's it's that nuts out there. When you see this uh, next video I share, I'm gonna, <laughs> it's going to blow your mind. But uh, I want to show you just how quickly. You remember the bloodbath comments? So this was Sunday, March 17th. This is Thursday, March 21st. This is the definition of bloodbath in Google. So on Sunday, March 17th, it was a ruthless solder of a great number of people, a massacre. Informal or a period of disastrous loss or reversal, few mutual funds performed well in the general bloodbath of the stock market, right? Then on March 21st, so four days later, Google has changed this definition to mean this. Uh, 
an event or situation in which many people are killed in a violent manner. He allowed the protest to go ahead despite warnings that it could spark a bloodbath. That was all changed just to slander Donald Trump more. And to show you just how silly, I don't know if you guys ever saw this, dealing with the whole bloodbath comments, Biden-Harris campaign statement on Trump promising bloodbath if he loses. So the Biden-Harris campaign was so stupid that they actually put out a statement on this. They've doubled down on it. The mainstream media has doubled down on it. They won't let up on this bloodbath comment, even though it was obvious he was talking about big losses in the auto industry. Okay, but fortunately, and I want to show you this really quickly, Spotify just disclosed the follower accounts for podcasts, revealing that Joe Rogan has a staggering 14.5 million followers. In contrast, CNN averaged 582,000 primetime viewers in 2023. CNN brands Joe Rogan as fringe and controversial, but his audience is actually more than 10 times larger than CNN's. So who's really fringe and controversial. And one of the problems the left is having right now is that they cannot control the media and they re Oh, wow. I got a super chat. M Moore said, did you see what Donald Trump posted on true social? He got the money. I saw that. Okay. That's, and he is, I I covered that a while ago. So that amounts to uh, $4 billion. It was right around that amount. I did a video on that a little while ago. So I understand that there's, there's money there to be had. But it's it's more than that. I, I, they need to block even having to pay that out. I, I could go on about uh, everything is so wrong with this. And I, I when Trump wins this next election, I really believe God's going to give us the grace and Trump the grace to win this next election. I hope he goes after all these people. You know, if people say they don't want a retribution tour, at this point, I want one. I didn't want one before. I was just like, oh, let's just get moving forward. No, no. Uh, they've d redefined the rules of this game to such a vast degree, and th and that being said, people, I'm gonna I'm gonna change up something here. I'm gonna stop this screen share, and I'm gonna go into the other one. While I'm pulling up this other video, I'm gonna give you a special treat. I want you to watch Jamie Raskin's meltdown in the House. I don't know if you guys saw this the other day, but Tony Bobulinski was in the House of Representatives, and. Uh, yeah, things went off the rails for Jamie Raskin when he got called what he actually was. So watch this, and I will pull this other video into the stream here. People preaching this mantra know better. They continue to lie directly to the American people without hesitation and remorse. Rep. Dan Goldman and Jamie Raskin, both lawyers, and Mr. Goldman, a former prosecutor with the SDNY from New York, will continue to lie today in this hearing and then go straight to the media to tell more lies. Hunter Biden's defense attorney, Abby Lowell, weaponized his letters to Congress to try to smear my name Mr. and Chairman. mistake the cold hard facts <laughs> Mr. Chairman. in an attempt to save his powerfully connected client Wait. and his father. So that's Jamie Raskin in the background having a freak out because he just got called a liar. I challenge Mr. Lowell to make those claims on national television so he can be held accountable for his lies. Prior to my successful business career, I was an officer in the United States Navy at Navy's Elite Naval Nuclear Power Training Command. I later served as the chief's, uh, the command's chief technology officer. <laughs> See, Jamie, Rass I apologize for the disruption from the. Bobulinski's trying to. Okay. Am I supposed to say it's my time, Mr. Raskin? Yeah, but please, <laughs> Mr. Bobulinski, please. Did you see that? Okay. Come to order. Uh, Mr. Bobulinski, Mr. Bobulinski, please okay. proceed. Okay. Please proceed. I apologize for the disruption from the minority. Okay. Well, Mr. Chairman, they save his time, but he called members of this committee liars, and I just want to know whether the order and decorum requirements of House Rule 11 apply to witnesses appearing before the committee. Uh, do, do the, does it apply or does it not? So now they have to confer, have a little conference. How do these rules work? What I think it's so. Should I address? I don't because Jamie Raskin is a liar. Look at he's so pissed. He's fuming. Look at his face. Look at it. There's hard light. There's decorum from the members. We've asked for that. There's no language that I'm aware of pertaining to a witness. Yeah. Thank you. So, so uh, don't uh, make sure we didn't uh, waste any of his time on the opening statement. Mr. Bobulinski, I'm sorry for the disruption. Please continue your opening yeah, statement. I think uh, you, Mr. Raskin, used we'll, we'll make sure it's right. We'll oh, make okay, sure. great. I just want to. I want my time back. Restate. Uh, make sure time. the American people hear all these facts. People, that's awesome. Now, I, I found this other uh, uh, stuff here. 
I, and I'm so excited to share this with you. Let's see here. There we go. All right. And we're going to go right here. And all right. Now, we're going to share this video with you here in just a second. It's going to blow your mind. I'm serious. This next video is going to just shock the crap out of you because I will give you just a little background on this. This is the Young Turks, which is a far left podcast. What you are about to see, I feel like I need to like do this. What you are about to witness is from a far left podcast. Okay. Do me a favor, smash that like. Let's get a few more people on because you're going to absolutely, I'm serious, you're going to love this. And do, uh, people, thanks so much again for uh, your support with my pillow, mypillow.com, promo code lumberjack. All right. But now let's watch this. Oh, gosh, I love this. Here we go. I got to add it to the stage and then I got to hit play. Now, put in the chat, make sure that you can hear this. Sometimes when I play from the internet, you can't. So please, just in the chat, yes, yes, you can hear it, if, if you can hear it. Dismembering a corpse and hiding a corpse after dismembering it, not bail, not bail eligible, not a serious crime. I'm not even kidding, guys. Like when Joy Behar outlined that case, I was like, She's crazy. This isn't a thing. This isn't real. This isn't real. So I looked it up. It's real, guys. It's real. Listen, if being on. So again, she is just now listen to her next comment. She is talking about a real crime in New York that was committed that they, they're, the people are released. This is nuts. Left means supporting this, then I'm not on the left and I'm okay with that. So let me give you the details of the case. It doesn't mean that. Okay, I don't know. Let me Joy give you the Behar's details. On the left. We're all on the left. We don't want people dismembering folks getting released. Only a couple some of do. lunatic Some do, some no, do. I know, <laughs> I was gonna, what I was in the middle of saying is only a couple of lunatic activists yeah. are like, yeah, we're pro dismemberment guys being let go. Okay, whatever, you know. Yeah, but the problem is, Sink, that this was actually voted on into law. See. Still, so the freak activists are the people you're electing. Criminals who dismembered bodies. It's so unfair to put them in prison. Okay, let me give you the details of the actual case, okay? So four people were arrested in New York after body parts were found in Long Island. Okay, dismembered body parts. The victims were, um, you know, two people from Yonkers, older individuals. Suffolk County police say 44 year old Stephen Brown, 38 year old Jeffrey Mackey, 40 year old Amanda Wallace, and 33 year old Alexis Neves or Nieves uh, were charged with concealment of a corpse, tampering with physical evidence, and hindering prosecution. They have not been charged with murder. Prosecutors told a judge. There was so much blood in the pipes, in pipes, sink, shower, and toilet of the Railroad Avenue home in Amityville where the suspects were arrested that it was deemed uninhabitable. Police said they confiscated meat cleavers, butcher knives, flesh, and body parts. Attorneys for Brown and Mackey admitted, admitted that their clients lived in that home where the body parts and all that blood was found, but denied chopping up did you guys get this? The home was deemed uninhabitable after these people had done this nefarious crime. This this is nuts. This is let next level nuts. 59 year old, uh, the 59 year old woman and 53 year old man whose uh, last known address was in Yonkers. Wallace also lived with Brown and Mackey in uh, Amityville. Police uh, said that uh, Knives is homeless. Okay. All four pleaded not guilty. The judge released them without bail. They were fitted with GPS monitoring and must report in person for in person probation and surrender their passports. I, I don't care about their passports. Dude, I. Without bail. Guys, guys, like what? Okay, so did further research because I just couldn't believe it. Here's she is, let's see, she's doing further research. She is having a a wake up moment right here. And Sank is over there on the other side saying, no, no, we wouldn't vote for this. Nobody wants this. But the problem is they did. Hey, if you're new to the channel, please do subscribe. Join. We have a lot of fun over here. With 2019 state reforms, mutilation and disposal of murdered corpses are among crimes that are no longer bail eligible. <laughs> the DA said the four went to barbaric lengths to cover the crime. What are we doing? What are we doing? What are we doing, Jake? <laughs> what are we doing? What are we doing?
doing? Someone tell me what the f are we doing? <laughs> yeah, look, no one signed up for this. I don't know how the hell any of these laws passed. Okay, no, you did sign up for it. See, and here's what I keep telling you. They did sign up for it because they voted for this. They voted for this. And he's saying no one signed up for this. No, the problem is they don't vet anyone on the left. They stand together in solidarity and they push this crap forward. This is exactly what Republicans don't do because, you know, Matt Gates is willing to take on Kevin McCarthy and now Speaker Johnson because he's sucking it up right now, too. But I, I just. They can't say that. Don't let them get away with that. They did vote for this. They did support this. And the very people making these laws are lunatics. I went to every progressive conference there was over the last 20 years. I never heard a single person saying, why don't we let the actual criminals go? Hey, if someone butchers someone and, and, and chops them up into little pieces, let's do the kind of criminal justice reform where they would be able to walk out free. Yeah, come like, at me, come at me right now and tell me I'm the bad guy because I want these people who dismembered corpses and tried to conceal the evidence in prison. Come at me and tell me I'm the bad guy. Come at me. I don't I, look. I don't look, guys. Insane! You guys are insane. Anyone who thinks this is okay <laughs> is insane, and everyone else in New York has to suffer the consequences of this. With random bag checks at the subway by National Guard troops. Exactly. That's what liberal policies get you. Random bag checks at the subway by National Guard troops. All right. Now, I told you, I promised you, I was going to show you that uh, Letitia James ally exposed her. So we got almost 9,000 people on the stream. So I'm going to actually roll into that. I did want to get to Christine's comment. How can we get James campaign's fund fraud investigated? I can forward ex post with the details. Legal Beagle USA from Washington State. Um, all of this stuff is getting exposed right now. So, anyways, please smash that like. We're gonna. Do, I'm gonna share with you uh, now this. So, this uh, was posted to X. My my daughter found this. She's helping me produce the show now, pulling together some stuff for me. But so wrong. Letitia James, ally, former Obama fundraiser, slams Trump fine and predicts New York will lose on appeal. This is the founder of Peebles. You are seeing a number. I think what's happening, people, and I want to get your comments here in the chat before I play this video. But I actually think what's happening here is all these billionaires are realizing that they could be on the wrong side in the next election and they might see these cases pressed against them. So let's watch this. I think everybody's kind of going, whoa, we cannot have this. This is weaponized justice. So watch this guy expose Tish James and the ruling in New York right now. All right, Doc. Hold on. If you don't know him, he's a very big player in the Democratic Party, a very close advisor uh, to presidents past uh, and present, including uh, Barack Obama, with whom he was quite close. Uh, but he doesn't like what he's seeing right now out of New York Attorney General uh, Tish James. And, and, and one of the things that he has mentioned about Letitia James is the fact that, well, he thinks she's a good attorney general. I believe that is still his view. I think now, Don, you she think sucks. that she's going too far on, on this, you know, Give us more than four to fifty million dollars, uh, and if you don't, we start selling buildings. What's your worry? Well, I think I've gone very far. I think that she's made a mistake. I think this whole case against Trump—it's a victimless um, case. It should never have been brought, and had it not been him, it never would have been brought because they've never brought a case like this before against any other business or business person. And so, I think that. That is an example of why Trump continues to rise in the polls because they are making him into a martyr. Now, um, the commercial real estate impact. See, now part of this is this guy's saying they're making Trump into a martyr. That's part of what got him upset because Trump is crushing it right now. Uh, is, is real. I mean, if Donald Trump does have to start selling buildings or putting up collateral based on those buildings and apparently can't even do that, um, that could that could make a, a tough situation in this city worse, couldn't it? Absolutely, it could. I mean, already New York is perceived as being very difficult to do business in essentially an anti-business environment. And during the pandemic, there was a mass exodus out of New York City to places like Florida and Texas. This amplifies, this case amplifies that it's very difficult to do business in New York. And if you happen to be a successful, wealthy entrepreneur, watch out because the government can be used to weaponize you, especially if you get out of line and do something that the far left doesn't like. They will not hesitate 
to use the legal system to disrupt your business or worse, to put you in jail. Folks, I got it. I just noticed we passed 10,000 people on the stream. This is the first stream I've had that passed 10,000 people. So I want to applaud you all. Applaud all the new people on. If you're new, please subscribe. Smash the like button, if you will. Let's see if we can get this thing up to 20,000. That'd be epic. Uh, but keep chatting it up. But this is wild. And I think what he's seeing here, what you're seeing from all these billionaires is they're like, whoa, the government could be totally weaponized against us as well. Do you think that is why a number of companies, businesses and, and, and rich guys in and around the city are holding them off, giving any money uh, to Donald Trump to help them out because they're afraid they become targets? Well, I think that there is a hesitancy to speak out on this issue because they don't want to um, suffer the consequences or perceived consequences of doing that. I you see that? They're trying to scare us into silence. They're trying to scare everyone into silence. This guy is, this is called it. I mean, this is really surprising because Neil Caboto just said this, which, I mean, he never says. I think more that, I mean, this is a business problem, not a political problem to Donald Trump. And I don't think his supporters um, would see that this is a action that they should step up to do to help him with his bond because it's solving a business issue. So yeah. he has to solve this issue on his own. And hopefully he will. Um, but uh, I think if you look what's happening in Florida, for example, uh, Paulson is having a big fundraiser for him uh, very shortly where the ticket price is up to eight hundred and some odd thousand dollars. Wow. And it's sold out already, from what I understand. Yeah, you're talking about Don Paulson, the big billionaire investor. Uh, let me get your sense, Don, then. You know, uh, Leticia James, uh, have you ever talked to her and say, by the way, what's really interesting, too, and I just did something, I talked about this on a stream the other day, but Ben Shapiro is hosting a fundraiser for Donald Trump. Figure that out. I mean, this Donald Trump has now become the uniter candidate. This Donald Trump, the great uniter. I'm not kidding you. In fact, come up with some other nicknames for Donald Trump. I'd love to see him in the chat. Uh, but he is. He is uniting left, right, neocons, everybody against Joe Biden. It's like that gal who told me in the salon the other day said, anything. My only goal, a liberal who voted for Bernie Sanders said, my only concern right now is getting rid of Joe Biden. And I love you dearly, but this is is, is going to kill the city. This is this is going too far. There's got to be some middle ground. Any conversations I have? No, look, I've, I, I've been a, a long-term supporter of hers because she's been an advocate of small women and minority-owned businesses since she's been on the city council. And she continues to do that. I have expressed concern that I think that this is a very slippery slope to selectively enforce an archaic law that has got no victim. Um, and I do, do you think she went to, too far um, here? In other words, that this is wiping out whatever gains she has. And she does seem to have it out for him, whether you agree or disagree with this <laughs> whole civil suit in the first place. It's unprecedented. We've never seen uh, Neil Cavuto. Come on, man. He she seems to have it out for him. She come on. That's weak. That's weak. Letitia James not only seems to have it out, she does have it out for Donald Trump. This is the most disgusting display of law enforcement I've ever seen in my life. Use and certainly of this magnitude. And then putting up the same size punishment as collateral or upfront bond money going forward. It's like a double whammy. It seems crazy. Yeah, it does. In it fact, is crazy. frankly, if she's confident in her case, she should let the former president take up his appeal without trying to impede his ability to do that and not to rush to seize his assets. And why is because she then? I, well, you're a good business. And why is she? I mean, is she thinking he's a flight risk? He's the most recognized face oh, on the planet. He's Come running on, for the Neil. highest office in the land. He can't hide in a, a Luxembourg cave. Um, so what is she worried about? That, that if he uh, is, you know... Uh, I can't. She's not, we're, Neil, come on, Neil Cavuto, honestly, did, does, it, does anybody see the stupidity of his questions here? Yes or no? Do you guys see, just yes or no? Do you see how dumb this line of questioning is from Neil Cavuto on this? I mean, you know, what, I mean, does she think he's a flight risk? I mean, he's so recognizable. Why would she do this? It seems that she's prosecuting this unfairly. We got uh, Pasquale 369. Donald J. Trump is a modern profile and courage. Thanks for that super chat. Um, I, this is the dumbest line of questioning I've ever heard, Neil. I mean, you don't. You can be an honest, impartial observer and still be able to call this out. Come on. Ultimately fails in this appeal attempt. 
that, you know, he'll have to pay up. Bottom line, it's a civil matter. He becomes president of the United States. Oh, I don't think it's about his ability to pay. I don't think they think of him at a flight risk. I think so it's they a vendetta. Think they will get it can one. only be a vendetta. Right? No. Yeah. And, and, Neil, I think they are confident or they think it's likely that this will get reversed. And then there will be no punishment. So they're rushing to, oh. in, to inflict as much pain on him as they can right now. Because once the... Do you guys catch this? This guy got it. This guy got it. I hadn't gotten to this part of the interview yet as I was watching this before I brought it into the show. But he gets it. It's not a flight risk. They are concerned about inflicting as much pain as they can on Donald Trump. This has nothing to do with justice. They figure he's going to win on appeal. That's the problem. If court puts an end to this, then there will be no repercussions. And this case would have been brought for naught. So to disrupt his business, disrupt him now, distract him from the campaign, um, that's the tactic. That's the goal. And that's why I think this is so wrong. I think if they felt they had a legitimate um, issue here and there was a loss, if Deutsche Bank lost $400 yeah. million, then yes, bring it on, especially $400 million in the tax. Wow. Wow, people. See, but they can't because that hasn't actually occurred. But I want to tell you, there are some issues here for Donald Trump, and I wanted to show this as well. Uh, not all is rosy out there. Trump leads in polls, but badly trails in crucial 2024 money race. Now, I know and we can see from before uh, when he beat Hillary Clinton soundly. That money was not the only thing. Do me a quick favor. Just hit that thumbs up button. It'll help get more people on this stream, help spread this news out there. Um, thank you for that. And uh, do chat in with where you're from. If you just joined the stream, we want to welcome you. And if you're new, especially, do chat in as well. I got some super chats coming across. I've got Greg Kirby. Uh, LJ is getting sued by New York City uh, firefighters and Trump. Really? Like, is that going on right now? Because I didn't even see that one. Uh, I know the uh, the firefighters, they have a, a lawyer stepped up and said that he would uh, give them pro bono legal services. But, uh, you know, again, Hillary Clinton lost and she had a big money advantage. But Donald Trump has an enthusiastic base and a polling advantage in swing states. He does not have anywhere near the amount of money of his rival, President Joe Biden. Again, I don't think money is going to be the only thing, but people, I mean... Everything's on the line this election, okay? Can we just be honest about that? Everything is on the line, so we have to get out there. We have to support him. Financial woes have become a major vulnerability for the presumptive Republican nominee. Well, he is at this point, okay? Uh, expected the most pres expensive presidential race in history. And then, of course, you got all the legal bills that Trump has. So he needs help. So if you can donate to Trump, uh, go do that. Uh, and then I love this one. So this goes on to that whole story that we just ran with Letitia James or Letitia. Is it Letitia or Letitia people? I don't know. I really don't care. I, I don't have a lot of respect for the gal. Hey, by the way, if you're watching on my Neil of the North channel, thanks for joining us over there. Uh, great to have you on board. I'm just trying to get my watch hours up on that channel. That's mainly hunting and fishing and stuff, but they demonetized it when they demonetized this channel before. It's remonetized now. But Biden's lawfare joke. Why do so many Democrats and their allies in the media desperately want former President Donald Trump to stand trial before Election Day? The answer is simple, because they think it will help President Joe Biden defeat Trump and win re-election. So far, the lawfare directed at Trump, two federal indictments, you know, and all of this have backfired in the polls to help boost Trump to a runaway victory in the Republican primaries. OK, Democrats hope a guilty verdict in a criminal trial, any trial will do, will peel away voters who say they support Trump now, but would not support him if he was a convicted felon. Huh. We'll see about that, people. Actually, with some people, it rises. Did you guys see the poll that was done a little bit ago where it showed that uh, President Trump went up two points in his race against Joe Biden if he is convicted? You guys see that? How many of you? Yes, no. Did you see that poll? That was, you know, national polling firm. And basically, if President Biden, you know, were to run against Trump, it's Trump plus six. OK, but if Donald Trump is convicted of inciting the Capitol riot. He goes up another two. It's Trump plus eight. Did you guys all see that? Hey, we got a super sticker here from Gregory. Thank you so much, Gregory Bam. Bomb, probably Gregory Bomb. Sounds German, actually. Um, 
I just watched a great movie last night, Flyboys. If you haven't seen that, I recommend it. It's good. Um, let me see. Where was the other? We got it all here. Here, I want to just I'm gonna bring this back in too real quick. Uh, these are the deals because just so you know, at my pillow right now, I mean we're $25 six piece towel sets. That's phenomenal, people. These are all just with the lumberjack promo because you guys have been such a big supporter of Mike Lindell. They called me today. And they said, hey, we're going to do these $25 extravaganza deals for you on your show. Uh, only a few people get these deals. You can have them with uh, MyPillow.com promo code Lumberjack. Or you can call at 800-568-2865 and uh, get the products you need. And the great thing is if you call the number, you've got great telephone advisors there to help you pick the right pillow. Uh, those types of things. So I uh, encourage you to use the 800 number as well. Uh, free shipping is still on. This is nuts. I can't believe the deals we're getting from my pillow uh, for you guys because of how greatly you've supported Mike Lindell. Uh, so thank you so much for that. But we're bringing the stream to a close. Uh, we got the story out, Letitia James. We got it out about uh, uh, what's going on in New York, just how bad the crime is and how everybody's dumping the Democrats. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. Subscribe if you're new. Smash the like button on, the, on your way out. See you on the next episode. Peace out, folks.